I also had friends stating they would never do this because they really love their family so much and they would never leave their family in such conditions. But at the same time, I had, you know, just left my job and I had another contract to start soon in Germany. Welcome to the Career Relaunch Podcast, where we discuss how to reinvent your career. My name is Joseph Liu, and I'm here to help you gain the clarity, confidence, and courage to overcome the challenges of making changes to your career so you can do more meaningful work and enjoy your professional life. In each episode, I feature people who have stepped off the beaten path to reinvent their careers. We talk through their unique personal journeys, the challenges they overcame, and the lessons they learned along the way to help you understand what it takes to relaunch your own career. Today, my guest is going to share her story of going from a press officer in the luxury fashion world of Milan to a tech recruiter in Berlin. We'll discuss the importance of asking for help when you need it and managing expectations of yourself, especially when changing career paths. Afterwards, during today's Mental Fuel, I'll discuss why making any major career move often involves trade-offs. Hello from Karachi. I've been in Pakistan for the past few days to host a couple personal branding workshops for members of the Lahore and Karachi chapters of the Entrepreneurs Organization. It's my first time in this part of the world, and it certainly has reminded me of how much your life and career are directly related to your unique surroundings, a topic we're going to touch on in this episode. Leaving your home country behind for a new job can be a daunting experience, both emotionally and practically. It often involves walking away from familiar surroundings, loved ones, and cultural norms, which can lead to feelings of homesickness, isolation, and even regret. On top of that, you've got to adapt to a new work environment, language, and way of life that adds on layers of pressure right as you're adjusting to that new environment. At the same time, moving to a brand new place can be an incredibly broadening and eye-opening experience that expands your world in surprising, enriching ways. Today, I'm speaking with Stefania Tosini, who's a polyglot with a background in international affairs and economics and recently made a big move of her own from Italy to Germany. With over eight years of experience across multiple industries, including roles in education as an English teacher for the Japanese School of Milan, luxury fashion as a press officer for companies like Dolce & Gabbana, and now in online retail as a talent acquisition partner for Zalando, a company at the intersection of tech and fashion, she finds her professional motivation in helping people find fulfillment and belonging in their careers. Stefania and I first crossed paths a few years ago during her days as a career development and employee relations manager at the SDA Bocconi School of Management in Milan. She was one of my main points of contact there during the early days of my collaboration with the school, and I still remember sitting down for a coffee with her in Milan to talk about the evolution of her own career and the impact your career choices can have on your identity. We've stayed in touch since, and after finding out she made a big international move during the height of the pandemic, I thought she would have some very interesting perspectives to share about what it's like to start a new chapter in your life and career. You can get all the show notes from today's conversation at careerrelaunch.net slash 93. Stefania spoke with me from Berlin. Hello, Stefania, and welcome to the Career Relaunch podcast. It is great to have you on the show. Thanks for coming today. Hi, thank you so much for the invite. So why don't we get started by, first of all, getting a snapshot of what is keeping you busy right now in both your career and life. Can you give me a glimpse into what you've been focused on recently? So first of all, Joseph, thank you for having me as your guest. In my personal life, I'd say that I'm focusing a lot of my family friends at the moment, especially after moving abroad, after moving to Germany. And I really realized that family to me is the most important source of energy for myself. And to give you context, I'm from Italy and I think it's absolutely true what people say about Italians. So I think I match all the stereotypes here, like I speak with my hands and I love good food (laughs) Uh and I'm a family person. So definitely family is one of my main focus points. And what about your career? What have you been focused on at work recently? From a professional point of view, I switched careers and industries a couple of times already. And now I'm really focusing on growing my expertise in recruiting. Like I'm working in talent acquisition. Therefore, I think it's like really learning all the time and 
bringing your niche expertise in certain families and sectors. It's really about growing and keeping on learning. Now, you are currently at a company called Zalando. For those people who are not familiar with Zalando, can you just give a very quick snapshot of exactly what Zalando is and what you guys do? Zalando is awesome. So it's my employer and is an e-commerce platform basically serving countries in Europe. We sell sportswear, beauty products, fashion products. And to me, it's like a very highly advanced tech company. Like the sector is retail, fashion and tech. At the moment, I am a talent acquisition partner. So basically working in recruiting and I just love my job. I love my job because I'm working with people and for people. And I do believe that the most important asset of a company is human capital. Before we go back in time, Stefania, I also know you're a bit of a polyglot. Can you remind me which languages you speak and how you ended up picking up those languages? Yes, I'm actually polyglot. Like I love studying languages. So I'm Italian. Of course, I'm a native speaker in Italian. I speak pretty well um, Spanish and Russian as well. And I'm currently studying German and Japanese too. Japanese has like a longer story <laughs> behind this. Yes. And I think like my passion for languages started when I was really, really young. I actually wanted to connect with people faster. And I remember that once I was traveling with my grandpas to the UK and I was really, really young. I think I was six years old, seven years old. And I really wanted to connect with people. Like I wanted to express myself. And the only way to do so was, of course, like getting confident with the language. And that was the moment I realized. I want to study languages. I just want to speak with other cultures, understand more from other cultures, connect with them. Perhaps it's because I come from, um, yeah, the country of human relationships. And this really turned my interest in learning languages. That's really amazing. When I hear that, and this is something I'm reminded of because you and I are both based in Europe, but as you know, I'm originally from the United States and I come here to Europe and I suddenly realize that everybody speaks at least two languages, sometimes three, in your case, four or five. How did you pick up so many languages? Of course, the more you travel, the more you have the chance to get in contact with other cultures, other traditions. And I really became like, curious. I think curiosity was really like the driving factor for myself. And overall, I was really passionate about literature. And I loved like Spanish literature, Russian literature. And I was really driven by that. I was really resilient. Like I really wanted to read like books in the language they were written. And to me, that was like a goal. How do I get to this goal? And to me, it was just like, yeah, let's go into grammar. Let's study grammar. Let's try to speak then with uh, the locals. Everything that's really related to culture, traditions. It was really moving something inside my soul. That's really incredible. I would love to dive into this a little bit more because I know just to switch gears here, if we go back in your history, you actually spent some time as an English teacher at a Japanese school in Milan. Before we talk about that, can you just tell me like your childhood, what did you want to be when you grew up? How did you think your work life and your adult life was going to look when you were a kid? My biggest dream was actually to become an actress. So I totally had a different path, like totally unexpected compared to what I'm doing now. Overall, I think my skills were really related to communications, connecting with people, and I was really a happy child overall, smiling, and I really wanted to also make a difference in people's lives and perhaps like also sharing the knowledge that I had and also trying to learn from the others. And that's why perhaps I ended up becoming a teacher 
Because as a teacher, you teach, of course, but you actually get a lot from the others, like from your students, from the people you're working with. And I really think that teachers make a difference, a really big difference in your life. And I must say that I was really, really lucky to have such great examples of teachers in my life. Like they really inspired me. They really pushed me in becoming a better person, a better student. And I'm also very conscious about the fact I could study. Like now, really, education is a big topic. And still in 2023, a lot of countries don't really have access to education. And I think I was lucky enough to have this in my life. And from the moment I understood I have access to education and I have access to great education, what can I grasp from this? How can I have an impact based on all the things that I've been in contact with, the people that I have been in contact with? And that to me was the moment that gave me the confidence in moving forward in my career and in sharing what I was learning as well. What triggered you to start thinking about doing something else? It sounds like the teaching was going well. You're having a really positive impact on students. Was there something in particular that got you thinking, hey, I might want to try doing something different? So I actually wanted to be in a new environment because, again, I am a very curious person. And so I know that I'm energized when I do something different all the time. So to me, stability is important, but at the same time, I really need to do something new and refresh. And this opportunity came really unexpected, to be honest. I was contacted back then by a headhunter because they actually saw that I had expertise in communication, that I was speaking several languages and they were looking for someone who knew pretty well English and Spanish and Russian as well. And they contacted me for a position in the press office in a fashion and luxury company, Dolce & Gabbana, based in Milan. And I thought, that's the time to make this change and accept this change. And I think I had nothing to lose back then. I really gave everything to my job in the school. But I also knew that it was time to try something new. And so you go from being in an academic environment at a Japanese school to one of the world's most well-known fashion brands, so Dolce & Gabbana. Can you give a glimpse into what that was like to work there and what exactly were you doing as a press office specialist? I was thrilled. Like I also started questioning myself, like why me? It was an amazing experience. Working in the press office meant really taking care of like marketers and influencers and like taking care of the credits where of course the company was mentioned in magazines and newspapers and of course online reports, online news. It was really exciting and you really felt like being part of this magic world of fashion and luxury and let's say that in Milan it's really relevant like this sector. And I really felt thrilled. It was awesome. I really loved my daily routine. I really loved translating press reviews. You really represented the brand. I'm just speculating and also wondering, is working for like a big fashion brand like that, is is it as glamorous as it may seem from the outside? I guess I'm imagining a bunch of people who are super well-dressed, like very fast-paced, very modern, very current exciting, dynamic environment. What were your expectations of what life would be like there? And what was your life actually like there? Absolutely a nice environment. I must say very competitive, like what we may see in movies, such as The Devil's Wear Prada. That's exactly what I was thinking about, yeah. (laughs) It's absolutely true. Like there is a lot of competition. There is a lot of perhaps like pressure on what you do and how you do that on how you look which is great like don't get me wrong like if this is what you really want you find exactly what you are looking for but for myself like I really had to be true to myself I loved the job I loved my daily tasks I also loved my colleagues and environment per se but it became toxic for my personality because I tend to be a very competitive person 
Like I tend to to perfectionism. Like I really want everything to be perfect. And back then, I didn't have the tool to stop myself from being this way. It couldn't last that long based on how I am. I see. So it's sort of like this combination of wanting to be perfect and also being in a very intense competitive environment. And it sounds like that just was not sustainable over time. If you, of course, have other priorities in your life and you want to focus on different things, perhaps it wasn't really the best path for myself. How did you go about figuring out what you wanted to do next once you realized that, hey, this environment may not be where I want to remain long term? What did you do to gain some clarity on what your next chapter might look like? There wasn't a list of things that I was, you know, thinking about. I didn't like prepare any document, like pros and cons. Like, of course, most of uh, the current, let's say, mentorship of coaching programs propose, which I think they do add a lot of value. But back then, I didn't have those tools. And I was actually connected with some friends. So networking here really played a super important role. And they told me, you know, we're looking for someone that is going to work in this business school in Milan. And it's actually a lot about employer relations and events, like connecting also students with job opportunities. And of course, in this role, it's fundamental that you can speak English and perhaps speak also other languages because students are coming from all over the world. How does this sound? Do you want me to connect you to the head of employer relations and career services? And I thought, yes, like immediately. I didn't really think about that twice. And I have, of course, my interview process and everything went super well. Yes. And then I started my new job in a new industry. And of course, with a new magic team. So this is, if I've got my timeline correct here, you were at Dolce & Gabbana for about a year. And then in 2017, that is when you went to the SDA Bocconi School of Management in Milan, which is where you and I actually first crossed paths. And when I think we last saw each other face to face, which was in 2019, and you were the career development and employer relations manager for the school. Can you explain what it was like to then go from Dolce & Gabbana back into more of an academic environment, this time at a school of management, but still in Milan? What was the transition like for you? I think it was a quite smooth transition at the beginning, also because I always say that once you change a job, what matters the most is how your team is welcoming you, how they're going to support you. And they really helped me in this transition. They really mentored me. And Bocconi was a very, very challenging environment. Perhaps there is this understanding of academic environments as more relaxed or perhaps led back. But in this case, Bocconi was really challenging. Like we had a lot of events, like we were responsible for creating training programs for our MBA students and students that were coming from, again, all over the world. And they really had high expectations. So you're really asking a lot from yourself. Like you really want to give the best. And this environment really put me in contact with a lot of great professionals, with a lot of ambitious people. And I gave a lot to this business school, but I also think it gave me a lot as well. It is a really great environment there, I have to say, Stefania. I've worked with, as you know, I work with a lot of different business schools and SDA Bocconi is just one of them. But I do find the students there to be really warm and very diverse and very friendly. And at the same time, very demanding and also very achievement oriented. And so it's an interesting combination. Now, I remember having coffee with you across the street from Bocconi in 2019. Now, this is late 2019, which is when I was there to host an in-person workshop. And then the pandemic happened. Can you explain to me what the pandemic meant for you in your career? Like, first of all, what happened with the work that you were doing? And what did you start thinking about at that time? So basically, back then, I wanted to be challenged more. I wanted to experience something new. And on top of this, my partner and I had a distance relationship. 
and we were ready to move to another country. Where was he based at the time? Uh, so he was based in Frankfurt and then we moved to Hamburg and I was based in Milan. And we were both looking for jobs really all around the world. And I ended up in Berlin and there were many things that actually contributed to this choice. And back then, when COVID hit, I was really scared, frankly speaking. And on top of that, they usually say that you should not change more than two variables at a time. And basically, I changed the industry. I changed my role. I changed country, everything altogether during a pandemic. Of course, I was scared. I was not fearless. I thought, did I really take the right choice? Will I be successful? Because once you join a new company in Germany, you have six months probation period, something that you're not used to. So I really had a lot of questions. Like I was questioning myself. I was questioning my decision. I was, of course, afraid about it. And unconsciously, perhaps, you start putting all those the fears that other people have as well. Because you may hear from other people, oh, you really have a safe job in Italy. Why are you moving? This is a full-time role. It's a permanent role. You have security, you have stability. And now for sure, there's going to be a crisis. We don't know what's going to happen. And then I really thought, I know. No one knows like what is going to happen with or without the pandemic. And I really thought that there is like a certain amount of uncertainty that I can deal with to be happy with my life. And the more I'm open to that, the happier I am. And I really thought that's time to move on. Let's do this. Did you have a job lined up? in Germany before you moved or did you make this move before you had all that sorted out? I actually already received an offer. This all came before the pandemic started. I was in contact back then with an amazing recruiter working in Zalando and I was really worried and I was contacting her every day like, is it really going to happen? Will everything be okay? Because also all the airports were closed, so I didn't know. Am I really going to be in that country? Will I be able to start? So it was really, really stressful. And on top of that, I was actually leaving my family. It was not really like I'm going on holidays. It's like, I'm going there. I don't know. Can I actually go back and visit them? I have a very close relationship with my grandpas. Like They were like my parents. And I was really worried about, can I see them again? All those things really worried me, but also made me grow. So this is early 2020 when you made the move to Berlin. So at the start of the pandemic, lots of uncertainty, lots of airports shutting down. I actually remember at the time, Italy was in the news a lot with lockdowns and a lot of volatility in terms of the regulations. And so you move over to Berlin. Can you just explain like, what was the toughest thing about making that move for you? (laughs) I'm leaving my family. I think that's still heartbreaking for me because to me, family, community is super important, like my friends. And I was really worried, like, what will happen next? I was worried for the health. I was worried for whatever could happen in the future. I was worried for things that I could not control. And I also had friends like stating they would never do this because they really love their family so much and they would never leave their family in such conditions. But at the same time, I had, you know, just left my job and I had another contract to start soon in Germany. And perhaps again, like I was unconsciously questioning myself, am I a bad person? Why did I take this decision? And then I think everything really went smooth when I took the time to step back, really ask myself, why did I take this decision? Really realizing that there is no size fits all and take one step at a time. Like we 
shouldn't really rush into decisions, but at the same time, we shouldn't let certain fears block us. And I survived. <laughs> I'm just listening to your story, Stefania, and I can't help but find myself thinking about a choice I also made, which was sort of similar to yours, where I left the Bay Area, where um, my mother and father only lived a couple hours away from there in California at the time. And I moved over here to the UK, which is where I'm now based. And I felt very conflicted about that. Like it was a really hard thing for me to reconcile. Even to this day, I still sometimes find myself thinking, ah, I moved so far away from them. And I guess what I struggle with is completely being at peace with the decision. And I'm just wondering on a day-to-day -day basis, how do you manage that? Or maybe another way of asking it is how do you know when the decision is right, even though it involves some major compromises? I think if you wake up in the morning smiling, then of course you feel like that's the right decision for you. And when you face your fears, you just like deconstruct what is worrying you and why, and you give those answers to yourself, you are already halfway. Like really to me, facing fear, be resilient and try to boost your confidence, bring in your passion every day for what you do. And of course, once you hear back from your family and from your friends and they tell you, oh, wow, it really looks like you changed a lot. Like, it really looks like you're super happy. Like, you're thrilled. Your eyes are shining. Then you have those answers. I'm going to shift gears here. And I just want to talk briefly about Zalando before we then talk about some of the things you've learned along the way. So you've been at Zalando now for roughly three years. And it seems like you've followed quite a rapid and a very fast paced acceleration in your career there. Can you let me know just how things have evolved for you at Zalando over the past three years? Absolutely. So Zalando is a fast paced environment. It's super dynamic. And this is what I love the most about it. So working in headhunting or recruiting to me is awesome. Like no two days are the same in this field. And you need to constantly innovate your strategy, your approach. You have to try new ways to catch the attention of your stakeholders and of your heart to find candidates as well. And while you do this, you always learn new things and you really become the recruiter in your niche. You become the expert, you become the to-go person. And this really excites me. Like perhaps the most important aspect to me is when I offer candidates their dream job, like you're really changing their lives. Like there is no better feeling. And this really gives you the energy to keep up with the good work. I can't let you go, Stefania, without also asking you a couple recruitment questions because you are a talent acquisition partner for a very large organization, Zalando. And I am just curious, how have you seen recruitment change over the past couple of years? You mentioned constantly having to innovate. Just wondering, since you've been involved in recruitment, first on the careers team at a global business school and now at a global e-commerce fashion brand, any major evolution you've noticed in the nature of recruitment? The market has changed a lot. There is a lot of competition and actually candidates want more, want more from companies, want more from employers. They want flexibility. And I think now there is more attention towards um, health topics and towards like, how do you want to spend your life? So there is more attention to those details relating to your private life. Basically, as a recruiter, you have to be an expert on different job families. And you really need to understand what are the job families that we're going to hire most for in the next quarter. So since you focus on tech recruiting, Stefania, and you're at a tech company, do you have any tips for someone interviewing for a role 
in tech where maybe they have limited direct experience or they don't feel like they're the most obvious candidate for the job on paper. I know I cross paths with candidates like this who are at business schools. The tech sector is always one that a lot of people are interested in getting into. But if you don't come from the tech sector, any advice for someone who's attempting to make that sort of a pivot into the industry? First of all, apply. <laughs> like there are a lot of candidates, like potential candidates that feel like they don't have the skills to do so. And they just refrain themselves from applying. Like if you don't try, you'll never know. I actually push a lot of candidates to get back to recruiters, like asking questions. Perhaps we have a first conversation and they don't have questions for me or they don't ask for feedback. Ask for feedback always, all the time. That's the first and most important thing. And on top of this, I think it's super important to connect with people in your network, with people that have the experience that you would like to gain. So it's not about networking for the sake of doing that. It's not just because you want to sell yourself. Like it's good to connect, to create connections, to understand how certain industries work, to inform yourself about it. And then you can also grasp a feeling, is this something for me? Is this something that I could consider? I get really a lot of knowledge around something that you want to do, about a role that you want to take. Connect with people, ask for connections, ask for a quick coffee chat. And really try until you make it. That's what I would say. I must say that it took me really long time before I landed my dream job. And I really left Zalando as a very last company I could apply for because that was my dream company as well. And I really got a lot of rejections, but going through all those rejections and those failures, let's say, I understood what I really wanted. Speaking of reflections, Stefania, the last thing I wanted to talk with you about before we wrap up are just some of your reflections on your very unique and interesting career journey. And I'm wondering if you had to give advice to your younger self as it relates to changing careers or even moving countries, what might that be? Be open. Listen to yourself. Like trying to gather reflections also from the people you meet. I think the most important thing that I reflected on is that you can do things alone. You can go through everything. But there is also no need to do things alone. So it's important that you learn to be vulnerable somehow. And then you can really ask for help. I just learned that having like honest conversations with yourself is really priority. And I understood that I'm just a dot in the ocean of knowledge. And when you work with such ambitious professionals and especially with people that perhaps went through difficult situations and you hear certain stories, you really start understanding what really counts in life and that we all have the tools to make it happen if you really want it. The other thing I was hoping you could talk about relates to your move, because I know that you mentioned it was a really challenging decision to move away from Italy to Germany and leave some friends and family behind. Now that you are in Germany, when you look back on this leap, is there something that you wished you had known about moving locations that you now know? You can't really expect everyone to see things as you do. I had my own opinions and my own ideas. And I tended to think, okay, if I think this way, then it must be the same for everyone. And I really wish I knew this before. Like I can't expect everyone to react as I wished. I can't expect everyone to be good to me. At the same time, I can't be good like to everyone. I can't force myself also to be up to the expectations of others. So I wish I knew I could let go things and people faster because we all have different opinions and different paths in life and you have to accept that. I think that was one of the best learnings from a personal point of view. Yeah, I was listening to you say that and 
I guess I also sometimes fall in the trap of letting others' opinions maybe sway me too much or disproportionately affect me, especially with the major decisions. Because on those big decisions you're making in your life, you do want to get a second opinion. Like whenever you're doing anything major, whether it's getting a surgery done on your body or making a major move, it's useful to get those second opinions. And at the same time, everybody's coming at it from a different standpoint. Everybody's coming at it from a different set of experiences themselves, which may have nothing to do with your actual unique situation. Correct. It's like the same feeling that I had and perhaps was the same feeling that was pushing me back from taking certain decisions is because we have so many different opinions. We also have a lot of noise and sometimes you have just to silence it and just reflect. Last question for you, Stefania, then I gotta let you go here. Having been through this career change, what is one thing that you have learned about yourself along the way? That I tend to be a people pleaser. <laughs> Perhaps this is something that um, I have in common with so many other people I met with in the last three years. And I learned to protect myself and set boundaries. Because, you know, when you work with a lot of people, a lot of great professionals, and you perhaps meet a lot of people outside of work as well, and you are far away from the family, you are actually looking for a community and you want to build connections. And to do so, you really start behaving differently than how you really are. And that's what I learned about myself that, oh, I'm, I'm really a people pleaser. And I didn't know that that was the level that I was crossing. It was a little bit too much. And here is another example where I really needed to step back and give myself the time to understand if I could like find this peace within myself as well and not really just have to have the rush to connect because I'm in a new country because I need to find uh, new friends or new people to connect with or like that could happen at work as well like really showing that you're present that you're there that you want to be in the middle of everything that you want to perhaps overperform as well, like really being there, being present. And I learned to protect myself from many, many circumstances and learned how to set boundaries. I think this is another super important thing to learn in life, generally speaking. Well, thank you so much, Stefania, for telling us more about your life there in Germany and as a talent acquisition partner, your former press office role in the fashion industry, the pivots in your life, and very importantly, how you know that you've made the right decisions for your career and your life, independent of what other people think. So it was really nice to reconnect with you. I wish you the best of luck with your role there at Zalando, and I hope things continue to go well for you there in Germany. And finally, I hope we're also gonna have a chance to meet up again at some point in the future. Of course, Joseph. So I hope you enjoyed hearing Stefania's perspectives on the difficulty of leaving family behind, transitioning into a different sector, and the importance of focusing more on what you want and less on what others think about your career choices. Now it's time to wrap up with today's Mental Fuel, where I'm going to share some of the tensions I felt when I moved from the US to the UK over a decade ago. Before we get to today's Mental Fuel, I wanted to thank Vista Social for supporting this episode of the Career Relaunch Podcast. Vista Social is a versatile, time-saving tool to manage all your social media accounts in one place. You can easily create, schedule, optimize, and publish content directly to multiple social media profiles from one simple dashboard. I actually use it myself to manage all my online profiles. Try Vista Social out for free right now by going to careerrelaunch.net slash Vista. This is the part of the show called Mental Fuel, where I finish the show with a brief personal story related to one of the topics we covered today and wrap up with a simple challenge to help you move forward with your own career goals. So for today's Mental Fuel, I wanted to pick up on this topic of moving countries and leaving your familiar surroundings behind that Stefania mentioned when she talked about moving from Italy to Germany. And I couldn't help but think about a big decision I made way back in 2010 to move to the UK after spending my entire life up until that point in the US. 
Now, for longtime listeners to this show, I've alluded to this before, but I thought I'd share a little bit more detail about my motivations behind making this move and the things I still wrestle with related to this decision, even to this day. To make a long story short, after finishing my MBA at the University of Michigan in 2007, I was working for the Clorox company, doing reasonably well in my marketing roles there and enjoying my first big corporate role. I was living in the downtown San Francisco area at the time. Living in California, especially the Bay Area, had been a dream of mine since high school. But as things go in life, there was a small complication. My then girlfriend, now wife, was based in London. So after we grew a little tired of our relationship being limited to daily Skype calls, I decided I'd be the one to make the international move. So in 2010, I moved to the UK with no job lined up, but my US passport in hand, which at the time enabled me to live and work in the UK without much restriction. And that really began the next chapter of my life and career. To be honest, it was kind of a mixed bag in the early days. I continued for a few very short years working in marketing, but I found the marketing roles to just not be as fruitful or rewarding as those I once held in the US. I found the cost of living and the value equation of life in London to be a little hard to stomach. My salary took a big hit and I was working much longer hours. I also felt a bit like an outlier at work, often as the only non-Brit on a team, where suddenly the first question I got was where I was from. On the personal front, while I was happy being with my partner, whom I eventually married, being in the UK meant being very far away from my friends in the US and also my parents who at the time had only been a short two hour train ride away from me in California. I also saw many of my friendships start to fade over the years, which is sometimes just inevitable, especially if you don't see someone very often, no matter how strong the friendship once was. And I remember during the first few years of being in the UK, all I could think about was eventually moving back to the US. I caught myself wondering about a lot of things during those early years, pondering what might have happened if I'd just stayed in the US. Where would my career have been? How much more time could I have spent with my parents, including my father who passed away two years after I moved to the UK? What state would my friendships have been in if I weren't so far away geographically? To be honest, I wasn't feeling super positive during those first few years in the UK. I found myself longing for my former life in the US. One of the turning points for me was when I was back in the Bay Area giving a talk at General Assembly about this topic of career change in June of 2017, and someone from my former business school cohort showed up in the audience. There's a guy named Aaron, and we had worked together quite closely on a team during my MBA years. Aaron and I are very different people, probably as different as two people can possibly be. And one of the things I value about being around people who see the world so differently from me is that they often can get you out of your own head. I remember chatting with him after my talk, kind of ruminating over what my life could have looked like if I just stayed in the Bay Area. And he kind of stopped me and interrupted and said, Joseph, this is what could have been, not necessarily what would have been. He reminded me that I could have gotten hit by a bus walking down the street there. You never know. And after that very short chat that day, I actually realized that I needed to adjust my own attitude and embrace the choice I made for very good reasons so many years prior. One thing I've learned over the years is that I'm not very good at predicting exactly how my career is going to transpire. You never know how things are going to turn out. You never know what life has in store for you. I've also learned that nearly every career choice you make involves trade-offs. It involves leaving something behind to make room for something else. All you can do is try and adopt an attitude that maximizes the chances of you creating the life and career you want for yourself regardless of what you chose to leave behind. After 12 years in the UK, I still struggle with some social dynamics here, the cost of living and remaining so far away from people in the US. But these days, I'm actually quite happy in the UK. 
I honestly can't imagine being more satisfied with the career path that eventually emerged for me here in a way that I'm quite certain would not have been possible if I'd just remained in the U.S. I can't think of a single job that would be a better fit for me. I can't think of a way of life that I could be more grateful for. The other day, someone asked me if I saw myself ever moving back to the U.S., and I told her no, not anytime soon. I like the life we've created for ourselves in the U.K., and it's our home, at least for now. This takes me to a quote from the Iranian-American writer Azar Nafisi. You get a strange feeling when you're about to leave a place, like you'll not only miss the people you love, but you'll miss the person you are now at this time and this place, because you'll never be this way ever again. So if you're someone who's moved locations for your career or you're someone who's just thinking about making a move, my challenge to you is to do whatever you can to look forward instead of backward, to trust that you made the best decision you possibly could to serve what you felt was most important to you at the time, and to focus on doing everything you can to make the most of your current circumstances rather than dwelling too much on what you left behind. I know that's easier said than done, so I'd suggest starting small and deciding on one action you can take right now to more fully embrace the path you've chosen for yourself. If you have a story of career change you would like to share, or if you want to just ask me a question you want answered on the show, I'd love for you to leave me a voicemail at careerrelaunch.net slash 93, where you can also find a summary of my chat with Stefania and learn more about her. Again, that's careerrelaunch.net slash 93. Thanks again to Stefania Tosini for sharing her story with us today from Berlin. And thank you for being part of our listener community. This episode was mixed by Liam McKenzie. Today's music was curated by Jonathan rinaldi Pohl, and the Career Relaunch theme song was written and performed by Electrocardiogram. I'm Joseph Liu, and I'll talk to you next time.